Welcome to the second session of week 1 and this session includes sedimentation and design of thickener. Now this particular session considers two lectures. In uh, first lecture we will speak about the sedimentation and uh, uh, in design of thickener we will discuss the diameter how to calculate the diameter of the thickener. In second lecture of this session we will speak about how to calculate height of the thickener and we will illustrate design of the thickener through a few examples. So, let us start the first lecture of this session that is lecture 2 of week 1. So, in this particular lecture we will define the sedimentation and we will see how sedimentation process proceeds. So, first of all the definition of sedimentation that is the separation of a suspension or a slurry into a clear liquid lying above the solid residue that is liquid is essentially free from the particles. It consists of a thick sludge containing high concentration of solids therefore, it is a process of phase separation. Now, this uh, as for a sedimentation is concerned this is the definition where we want to have the clarified liquid from the slurry or thick sludge from the slurry. If we want to obtain that we go for the sedimentation process. So, as for a sedimentation is concerned that is nothing but the phase separation process where we get the clarified liquid as well as thick sludge and the feed in this case would, would be the uh, slurry or the solution. So, sedimentation is effectively used in water treatment process where suspended solids from water is removed using gravity. Solid particles entrained by the turbulence of moving water may be removed naturally by sedimentation in a still water of lakes and ocean. Now, what is the meaning of this that when we consider the moving water whatever solids are available in that that remains at the suspended position. However, when we consider still water when water is uh, not movable what happens the uh, solid particle which are available in the slurry that starts uh, settling down and we can get the thick sludge as well as the cl clarified liquid as the product. So, that is nothing but the sedimentation. So, one thing you have understand uh, you have understood over here that sedimentation uh, proceeds when um, solution is available at a quite still position it should not be movable. So, we have to collect the liquid in some container and then it uh, uh, let it uh, settle for let it uh, rest for some time particle will be settled down and then we can get the thick sludge and uh, clarified liquid. So, here we have to consider the uh, liquid which we are considering the solution which we are considering that should be at quite still position. Why I am using quite because we are using the sedimentation process for continuous operation. So, in continuous operation also we try to have least turbulence during the operation that is why I have used the word um, it should be quite still not a still. Therefore, if you consider this particular uh, diagram figure here what uh, um, what is appearing is one uh, bottle where we have put the uh, slurry and that slurry is completely mixed with the solid as well as uh, solvent. So, this slurry we have put over here and we rest it for some time and then after that we can get the particles at bottom. So, if you consider the bottom uh, most section of the bottle that is we have the solid um, we have uh, slightly uh, larger particle in comparison to above layer and uh, at the top of this we have the clarified liquid. So, that is the sedimentation process where slurry is uh, allowed to uh, remain at a still position for some time and then we have the product of this. So, when we consider this particular uh, process here we have two product first is the thick sludge and second is the clarified liquid. So, a sedimenter is a thickener uh, 
if concentrated sludge is the desired product and it is clarifier if clear liquid from the suspension is the desired product. So, here we have uh, two product from the same operation first is the thick sludge and second is the clarified liquid. If you want to see it uh, in detail you can visit this site. So, through this diagram we can uh, have the idea what is the sedimentation. Now, we will see its application. The application of sedimentation is again to have clarified liquid and the sludge. So, it will be used in potable water treatment uh, plant where sedimentation is employed in potable water treatment where chemical coagulation and flocculation are generally used. Smaller particles are grouped together into flocks of a bigger size, it reduces the settling time of the suspended solid. Now, in this statement what we have understood is when we are considering a smaller particle, they um, uh, agglomerates or they, they uh, uh, join to each other and make a flock. Instead of this much particle, we can have the particle of bigger size because many smaller particles are joined uh, to each other. Now, why they join? Because we add some of the um, additives into this for this agglomeration process uh, and flocculation process. So, they prepare the flock and because it becomes of higher uh, um, size, uh, it will have higher mass. So, more mg will be applicable over here. So, it will be settled faster in comparison to a smaller size. So, it is used in potable water treatment and it is also used in waste water treatment plant. The primary treatment of sewage is removal of floating and settleable solids as well as the pollutants embedded in the suspended solids through sedimentation. So, the floating and settleable uh, product solids are uh, or the pollutant which are available in the solution that are separated through sedimentation. So, here reagents are used in secondary sedimentation tank as large amount of reagents are required to treat waste water at initial stage. Now, what is the meaning of this? At primary stage, we use we let the slurry to settle itself. We do not add additives because waste water treatment plants are huge in size. So, they will require more uh, amount of reagents also. So, first it will settle in itself then we go for the secondary sedimentation uh, process where uh, the amount would be slightly reduced than the initial stage and then we use the reagents uh, over here for further um, separation. So, it is used in potable water treatment as well as waste water treatment plant. Now, as far as sedimentation is concerned, what is the advantage of this? It has excellent reproducibility, it means it generates clear liquid as well as thick sludge in a proper way. Disadvantages of sedimentation, the first is the method cannot be used for emulsions, the material does not settle or for very dense material that settle quickly. So, here it is also not used the, for the material which will not settle and which are settled uh, very fast or um, they also cannot be separated by this sedimentation. So, it is not used for uh, uh, emulsion as well as very high density material. Second disadvantage is the method depends on the ambient temperature that affect viscosity. So, that is the disadvantage because usually the uh, sedimenters are open tank uh, uh, equipment, uh, they are open to the environment. So, when the temperature reduces in um, uh, winters, viscosity of the solution will increase and it will not allow the particle to settle faster. So, obviously, it will be affected by the weather and uh, the um, temperature outside and therefore, it, that is the disadvantage that if we are considering this uh, for uh, faster, uh, in summer we have the sufficient, we have uh, uh, satisfactory performance, but in winters we do not have. Orientation of non-spherical particles also influences the result. 
Yes, here we have the orientation of the particle. It means when uh, any when particle has different shape, let us say it is it has the needle kind of. So, it when it will uh, fall, it will lie in this at water surface, it will uh, be uh, at floating condition, but when it will fall in this condition, it will settle down. So, orientation will definitely affect the uh, settling of the particles and thus the sedimentation. Another disadvantage is the technique cannot be used for mixtures of different densities. So, this technique will be used for um, homogeneous material. Uh, if we want to separate for different densities, then they can also be, uh, uh, they can uh, not uh, settle layer by layer. So, that is when we considering uh, the mixture, it will be uh, in sludge we have the mixture not layer by layer separation of uh, different density material. So, it cannot be used for that purpose because it will settle together. So, you can understand why it is so because when we are considering de densities of different uh, uh, material for example, one is having higher density, one is having lower density, but if uh, the particle which has lower density, if it has higher size, it will settle faster. And if uh, the uh, de material is having a higher density and the size is very small, it will be settle uh, after the larger particle of a smaller density. So, that uh, the sludge, we, whatever sludge we obtain that would be the mixture of different material, not layer by layer material we can obtain through this sedimentation process. So, that is the disadvantage of this. Now, factors which uh, influence the sedimentation process. The first one is the density, greater the density of the particle, faster particles settle. So, obviously, the density will be a factor uh, along with the size. So, when density of the material will be high, it will settle faster. Uh, but if it has the size different sizes, so that will we can obtain as a mixer. But obviously, uh, we can have the idea li like if it has the higher density um, and uh, two particle is having same size, one is having higher density, one is having lower density. So, obviously, higher density particle will settle faster. Size larger the particle, faster they settle that we have already discussed that if particle size is higher we can have more mass in that, mg will be applicable more in that, so it will be settle faster. Temperature, lower the temperature of the water, higher the viscosity, so lower the particle settle. So, here we have uh, in the previous slide, we have discussed the effect of weather on the sedimentation. In winter, it is uh, settle uh, slowly in comparison to summer. Now, why it is so? Because that is uh, it has the effect of the temperature. When in summer, we have uh, higher temperature, viscosity will be less, particle will settle faster. However, when temperature is low in winter, viscosity would be higher and the settling will be slower. Now, another factor is the turbulence. More turbulent the flow is slower the particles settle. Turbulence affect the settlement of the particles uh, uh, greatly because when a um, um, uh, stream will be movable, the particle which are available in that it will move with this. It will not have uh, sufficient uh, time to settle, it will move with the particle, if, if it will move with the uh, fluid. So, turbulence is not uh, required, Turbu turbulence is not desirable as far as sedimentation is concerned. Stability, instability can result in short circuit flow influencing the settling of particle. So, here we need the stability in settlement of the particle. Next factor is bottom sore. During bottom sore, settled particle are re suspended and washed out with the effluent. Now, what is bottom source is uh, sore is basically the sludge is uh, sludge available at the bottom of the tank. So, when we clean this, it will be taken out, it will be suspended and washed out with the effluent. Flocculation, it results in larger particles and thus it is increasing the settling velocity. So, flocculation will increase the size of the particle and thus 
the settlement of the particle will be faster as we have discussed in potable water treatment system. So, these are few, these are the few factor which affect the sedimentation uh, process. Now, here we have the sedimentation general facts. The solid particles settle under two different condition, the free as well as hindered settling. So, when the particle will be settled in the sedimentation, here we have two condition. First is free settling and second is hindered settling. Free settling is basically uh, if a particle falls, uh, particle is available in the solution and it will settle, uh, it will not affected by the movement of other particle or by the um, availability of the wall of the tank. So, it will not affected by other circumstances, it settle on its own uh, flow, on its own uh, velocity. Therefore, if the particle falls in a gravitational field, through a stationary fluid and their movement is not affected by the walls of the container as well as other particle, the settling is termed as free settling. So, when it settle with its own velocity without affecting uh, by other factor, we can call this as the free settling. Now, free settling occurs when the concentration of the solution is less than 1 percent. Uh, so, uh, when the concentration is increased, it means more particle is available in the solution. So, it will be definitely affected by the movement or, of other particle as well as the wall. So, there we call as the hindered settling because uh, uh, the movement of particle is affected by the movement of other particles. So, free settling as well as settl uh, hindered settling both will occur in sedimentation. So, here we have another fact that if a clarified liquid that is the liquid as free from the particles as possible is produced, then this is called the clarifying capacity of the sedimenter. It means when we have um, clear liquid which is free from the solid as uh, much as possible, we can call it the clarifying capacity of the sedimenter. If overflow liquid must be free from the particles, then the upward velocity of the liquid must be always less than the settling velocity of the particles. And thus for a given throughput, the clarifying capacity depends on the diameter or cross section area of the tank. Now, what is the meaning of this particular statement that when we need the clarified liquid, um, its uh, capacity will depend on the diameter of the tank. Now, why it is so? Because when we have solution in the um, big in the su sufficient diameter or sufficient cross sectional area tank, what will happen? The particle will start settling down and particle will start settling down with more velocity and liquid which is coming uh, up is with is having the is having lesser velocity than the particle otherwise what will happen particle will take the the liquid will take particle with itself and it will remain suspended so when we provide larger uh, cross sectional area the fluid which is entering into this its uh, velocity reduces then the uh, velocity by which it is entering so when it comes to the uh, sufficient cross sectional area it, the velocity of particle uh, uh, which is moving in this direction that will be slower down. So, it will start settling down with faster rate and liquid which is penetrate through this uh, particle, it will have lesser velocity. So, what will happen? The particle will settle uh, um, in a lesser time and we have clarified liquid. So, it all depends on the diameter or cross sectional area of the tank. So, if we want to get the clarified liquid, diameter is the main concern uh, that is the uh, conclusion of this statement. Secondly, if a thick sludge as concentrated with the solid as possible is obtained, then the degree of thickening of the sludge is controlled by the time of residence of the particles in the tank and hence by the depth of the tank below the feed inlet. 
Now, when we obtain the thick sludge, what will happen? The particle will ha have to uh, stay in the tank for sufficient time. It means uh, when we consider when we start uh, collecting the sludge, it should not be uh, very uh, immediate then the feed is entering, some time is required. So, when we need thick sludge, height is the main concern of the thick uh, of the thickener. So, as far as sedimentation is concerned, there are two design factor. First is its diameter uh, on which clarified liquid capacity depends and the um, uh, thick sludge capacity, uh, the, the thick sludge production capacity will depend upon the height of the tank. So, since the industrial thickeners are constructed in large size, even a minor over design of the tank could fetch significant financial losses to the concern. So, in subsequent slide you will see the diameter of the tank is very high, sometimes it, it is 150 meter also. So, if we are providing such high diameter tank, height should also be um, a factor in this. So, what will happen? Uh, though it uh, as height as its size is too large even if we a little bit over design the tank the financial loss will be significant so we have to design the sedimenter very carefully now here we have the batch sedimentation test gravity separation can obviously be applied to those particles which have density greater than the water so that is the primary requirement that we can have the settlement of the uh, solid when it has density more than the water otherwise it will remain suspended so goal of the gra gravity sedimentation is first is to produce clarified effluent and second is produce a highly concentrated solid sludge stream a primary study of phenomena is usually performed in laboratory on a sample of slurry in the batch sedimentation test. So, here we are going to discuss what is batch sedimentation test. Now, before this we should understand why we need this uh, batch sedimentation test. Uh, as I have already told you this is the continuous process. So, we are not going to design directly the continuous system. First we will speak about first we will consider the batch sedimentation test. We will carry out batch sedimentation te test and then we will transpose this data to uh, design the continuous system. Now, why it is so? Because when we consider the sedimentation process, what is the whole process is when we consider one, uh, we con consider, consider the tank and from where from one side feed is entering and particle start settling down. Now, at initial stage what will happen as the particle is spread continuously uh, throughout the surface, it has uh, they are quite apart from each other. So, they will start settle faster, but as far as they move down, they can be affected by the flow of other particle, velocity of other particle or presence of other particle and they will uh, acquire, they will face more and more hindrance. So, once we carry uh, out uh, the sedimentation process, initially it is faster and after that it slows down. So, that we can understand that it is nothing but the time dependent uh, process uh, and uh, many other things happens like if larger particles come over the smaller particles, it takes the smaller particle by its velocity, not the velocity of the smaller particle. So, there are many complications which uh, uh, appears during the operation of the sedimentation. Therefore, initially we will do the sedimentation process at batch level, uh, where we consider the same slurry which we for which we have to design the continuous system. So, to design the continuous system for the slurry, first we have to carry out batch sedimentation test using that slurry. Now, the procedure of batch sedimentation test is, it is quite simple, a sample of slurry is taken in a cylinder and is kept under observation that all that is all we have to do like we have to take the transparent uh, uh, glass in which we have to fill the slurry which is completely mixed in itself. So, what will happen uh, uh, the um, uh, we have to observe the behavior which is carrying out in the glass cylinder. 
So, if you see this figure here we have the glass cylinder where we have put the sample of the slurry for which we have to design the continuous system and uh, this uh, slurry is completely mixed in it. It means uh, there will not be settlement, uh, the settlement of the particle is not started at time t equal to 0. The complete uh, concentration of this solution is homogeneous. So, the height of the free surface from the bottom of the cylinder uh, h 0 at time t equal to 0 is first noted down. Now, what is h 0? h 0 is the total height of the solution which is available in the glass cylinder. So, that should be h 0 at time t equal to 0. The test is conducted under isothermal condition since temperature variation can cause free convection current in the medium. So, here we have to uh, carry out the whole process uh, in uh, uh, isothermal condition. Now, what is the process? The process is very simple. You consider this figure. In first figure, we have this uh, glass cylinder where homogeneous solution is uh, uh, available up to height h equal to h 0 Th that is uh, that we have already discussed. Now, what we have to observe? We have to observe the height of the clarified section. Now, what is clarified section? Uh, once we have the homogeneous mixture which is completely mixed in a glass cylinder, when we keep it for some time, what will happen? The solid which is available in this solid particle, they, they start settling. So, total volume of the solution will remain, uh, total volume of the solution will remain same. However, the uh, from the top we will see some uh, clear water zone to be appear for, um, and it will keep on, uh, it, it will be uh, uh, keep on uh, uh, moving, the uh, solid will keep on moving and we have more and more clear water zone. So, after some time we have a few uh, zone in the uh, glass cylinder to observe that we have to take the glass cylinder not the uh, cylinder which is, which is uh, not uh, through which we cannot see. So, we have to take the glass cylinder always for this test. Now, what happens uh, after some time we have four reg regions into this cylinder. At the top we have the clarified zone that is clear liquid will appearing in, in this. And below this we have the uh, zone settling or we also call as thickening zone. Here in thickening zone uh, the solution, the concentration of the solution will be almost uniform. Particle will settle, but in this particular zone the uh, concentration will be always will be almost uniform. Now, below this we have a uh, session, we have a section which we call as a uh, uh, transition zone where the concentration varies significantly and uh, bottom uh, at the bottom of the tank here we have the compression zone where the sludge is where sludge starts accumulating so uh, here we have four zones among which the uh, transition zone appears disappear quickly and after some time we have only three zone that is the clarified zone, uh, zone settling that is thickening zone and compression zone only three zone will be available and after some time what will happen uh, when we observe this three uh, zone uh, the height of the clarified zone will, will be increased uh, and uh, height of the clarified zone will be increased and similarly height of compression zone will be increased because more and more sludge will ac start accumulating in this section. So, this height uh, compression zone height as well as clarified zone height it will increase. However, height of this uh, thickening zone or zone settling will keep on decreasing. So, once it will uh, this section uh, the height uh, of uh, thickening zone will keep on decreasing after some time one uh, uh, position, one uh, situation appears where we have only two zone that is clarified zone as well as compression zone. Now, the time at which this appear, this two zone will appear or I say the time at which the um, thickening zone disappear that time we call as the critical sedimentation time. So, 
at critical sedimentation time we have only two zone first is the clarified liquid zone and second we have the uh, compression zone. So, after that what will happen the height of compression zone will further keep on decreasing because particle which are all particle which are available in the solution they have they have entered into the compression zone and they further start settling through hindered. So, that that process is very slow, but the height of compression zone will keep on decreasing and similarly height of clarified zone will keep on increasing. So, that is nothing but the uh, batch sedimentation test. Now, what we have to observe over here is time as well as height of interface, which interface? the interface of thickening zone as well as clarified liquid zone that height we have to observe from the bottom after certain time. So, at time t equal to 0 the though that interface will not available we will we have to consider total height of the solution available in the cylinder. So, that we have denoted as h naught at time proceed t 1 the height should be h 1. So, that height is basically the height of this interface. So, at t equal to t 1 this is h 1 and similarly at t equal to infinity we have h equal to h infinity which is nothing but the total height of the compression zone and it takes too much time to achieve this uh, compression zone height h infinity. Now, this data is translated into the continuous process to scale up the design of industrial sedimenter. So, you can understand that this experi uh, experiment we have performed with the given slurry and this data is now transposed into the continuous system where that slurry will be used uh, for continuous sedimentation process. So, the main reasons for the modification of settling rate of particle is so the main reason for modification of settling rate of the particles in concentrated suspension are the first reason is if a significant size range of the particles is, is present the large particles are settling relative to a suspension of smaller ones so that the effective density and viscosity of the fluids are increased. So, he, here we have uh, one uh, reason for this settlement that larger particle will settle faster in comparison to smaller one and that is quite obvious also. So, once it will be carried out the density and viscosity of the fluid incre increased which fluid which is settling not the clarified zone. So, upper velocity of the fluid displaces during settling is appreciable in the concentrated sludge a concentrated suspension. The smaller particles tend to be dragged down by motion of the larger particles and are therefore accelerated. This we have already discussed. Um, and finally, the reason is for the settlement is because of particles are closer together in a concentrated suspension, flocculation is more marked in an ionized solvent and the effective size of the smaller particle is increased and therefore, the settlement will be faster. So, these are few reasons by which are um, mainly affected for the same settlement uh, mainly affected by the particle and which are responsible also for the settlement of the particle. Now, the method of operating a batch process is, is still practiced in a small industry, but its shortcomings are obvious. So, once the plants grew larger, the need for continuous operation becomes inevitable. So, here we have already carried out the test at batch condition. In some small industries, batch process, batch sedimentation is used, but for larger plant, uh, the continuous operation is required. So, we have, we need the um, design, we, we have to design the thickener for continuous operation. So, the trend in this direction started in the late 19th century when heavy duty applications such as iron ore, coal and other beneficiation processes have grown rapidly. So, here the design of continuous system is already started is started in 19th century for beneficiation of coal and other minerals. The high time for thickeners was in the 60s when the metallurgical industries were booming 
and sizes of up to 150 meter diameter were constructed. So, here you can observe that uh, we have uh, the diameter of tank is 150. So, such huge diameter of tank this is one example only we have lesser size also, but you can imagine the size larger size of this. So, uh, that is therefore, we have to design the thickener very carefully because uh, slightly over designing of this will affect the will give the financial losses to the industry person. So, if you see this particular figure, so if you see this particular figure here we have the in the sedimenter which is huge in size. So, you can imagine the we have to design this uh, uh, very carefully, we cannot expect slightly over designed thickener. Now, as far as design of thickener is concerned, we will go for the continuous operation. So, here we have the continuous process where uh, here we have the uh, thickener where feed enters continuously and zones will be uh, formed in between inside the tank and at the bottom we have the uh, thick sludge. So, that is taken out con continuously. So, here we have the inlet as uh, uh, flow rate uh, uh, volumetric flow rate A and with the concentration C A and uh, sludge is taking out with the volumetric flow D with the concentration C D and we have the formation of clear liquid as B stream. So, B is uh, almost free from the particles. So, that is the continuous system where the bottom is slightly conical and that conical we have kept for a purpose of uh, easy removal of easy collection of the sludge which is uh, accumulated at the bottom. So, here we have uh, the parameters which will use for the governing equation for this uh, design of thickener and these parameter first is we have defined the flow rate uh, in meter cube per second. So, that is all flow rates is uh, flow rates are volumetric flow rates. Uh, concentration of solid we have defined as kg of solid per meter cube of slurry. Uh, that is the unit of density also, but that is kg of solid per meter cube of slurry. Assumption what assumption we have taken is the overflow liquid is free from the solid. So, B does not contain any solid that we have assumed that is the clear liquid. Now, make the balance over here. First of all, we go for the component balance. In component balance, what will happen if you see A C A equal to D C D, it means uh, volumetric flow of A into concentration of A that is uh, C A equal to uh, volumetric flow of uh, underflow or we can call it outlet stream also and its concentration C D because B is free from the solid. So, B is B will not be considered in component balance. Uh, further overall fluid balance we have taken as A 1 minus C A by rho minus D 1 minus C D by rho equal to B. Now, as far as fluid is concerned B is completely free from the solid. So, that we have considered uh, uh, completely. Now, what is A? A we have taken as 1 minus C A by rho. Now, what is this 1 minus C? Now, what is this C A by rho? C A is the concentration of uh, inlet feed and rho is the density of solid. So, when we consider this two that would be nothing but the uh, fraction of solid. So, 1 minus uh, fraction of solid when we are considering that should be the fraction of liquid. So, therefore, that fraction of liquid is multiplied with A and similarly D is multiplied with 1 minus C D by rho. So, that is the fluid balance where rho is the density of the solid. Now, from above equation that is uh, from component balance and uh, in overall balance in overall balance we will remove we will eliminate d from the component balance and uh, after rearranging this we have this equation a c a uh, 1 by c a minus 1 by c d equal to b now dividing both side of this equation by cross sectional area that is a r of the tank so, A C A by A R, A C A is basically the mass flow rate of the feed that is Q. Now, why it is Q? Because if you consider this A, its uh, unit is, uh, it is volumetric flow, flow meter cube per second and C A is basically uh, the 
kg of solid per uh, meter cube of slurry. So, that should be uh, the multiplication of this should be kg per second. So, this q is the mass flow rate of the feed divided by AR equal to B, B is available over here that is divided by AR and uh, uh, that whole is divided by 1 by CA minus 1 by CD. Now, this B by AR, B is what? B is the clarified zone and B is the volumetric flow divided by uh, cross sectional area of this. So, once we consider B by A that will be nothing but the uh, velocity of the liquid clarified liquid which is moving upward. So, that we have denoted as x and that is nothing but the sedimentation velocity or settling velocity of the particle or rate of sedimentation. So, here we have uh, consider A C A by A R equal to x by 1 by C A minus 1 by C D. Now, this equation is applicable when we have uh, assumed that the concentration inside the se sedimenter and that is uh, of uh, outlet stream uh, or underflow stream, the concentration of these two should be equal. However, in sedimenter what happen? The concentration inside the tank will continuously change. Therefore, instead of considering the feed, uh, inlet feed at and underflow, we have to consider one layer where the concentration will almost be uniform. So, that we call as the capacity limiting layer. So, that in that layer, the flow is uh, we have denoted with the capital L and the concentration of that uh, layer is uh, Cl which is moving downward. So, we can replace A C A by A R with L C L by A R and that is x by 1 by C L minus 1 by C D. So, this is the final equation for design of thickener. So, this is the equation where values of L C L by A R should be determined at different values of x and C L and minimum value of L C L by A R will find the maximum value of A R which should be the thickener cross sectional area. Now, what is the meaning of this that once we have to uh, what we have to calculate from here is the cross sectional area and then only we we can are we will be able to calculate the diameter so to the calculate this we need uh, we have two variation first is the variation of x and second is the variation of cl because concentration because layer will be moving from upper to bottom so uh, concentration of the layer cl will keep on moving. However, concentration of underflow will be constant. So, only two variable x as well as C L. Now, how I will find the value of x that is nothing but the sedimentation velocity. To calculate this x value, we have to uh, use the batch sedimentation test data. So, you can see this figure here we have uh, the batch sedimentation data which contains time as well as height. So, that we have to plot in the over here height of the interface and in at this section we have to uh, we will consider consider the time all that data we have to plot in this. So, at particular time we at particular point we have to draw the tangent and we have to see the velocity of that uh, at that point and how I can calculate the velocity that is uh, uh, dh by dt. So, the slope of the tangent to the curve at any point r that is the point r which is correspond to t is equal to t l gives the instantaneous rate of sedimentation and similarly we can calculate velocity at different points while drawing the tangent over here and calculate dh by dt value. So, different velocity, velocity at different time we can find from this. So, x we have already find C L how I can determine uh, its uh, uh, relation is uh, h i C L equal to C A H naught, where h i is the height of interface if all solids present were at the concentration C L. So, how I can find h i is h i we can find at any point if you see this figure we can find h i at uh, any point where I have drawn the tangent the where it will cut the y axis there uh, that point we call as h i. 
So, here we have drawn different value of x as well as C L, C L I can find by different H I value. Now, once we draw this, we can calculate L C L by C A. Now, L C L by C A, if you observe, it has this um, curvature which is uh, parabolic nature. Now, how it will be affected? It has only two variable, first variable is x and second variable is C L. Uh, and uh, we, we can understand that uh, once uh, C L will be increased, what is C L is the concentration in that layer. So, when this C L will increase the uh, li liquid uh, which is moving through this, its uh, velocity will be, its uh, 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 the rate of sedimentation will keep on decreasing, the velocity of cleared liquid will keep on decreasing because of presence of other particles. So, what will happen at some point, uh, initial point x will dominate and uh, if you see this CL that will come in numerator also. So, after it here we have uh, we can observe as the we can consider as the multiplication of x as well as CL. So, in some part x will dominate and in some part CL will dominate therefore, we have this parabolic kind of curve. So, once we have drawn this curve the bottom most line bottom most point of this will give the minimum value of LCL by AR. Now, once I have the minimum value of LCL by AR from this we can find the maximum value of AR that is the cross sectional area. So, value of A corresponding to lower value of LCL by A cannot be directly used for final design, it must be multiplied by two safety factors. So, A we have already calculated that is nothing but AR, I should write over here AR. Uh, so, AR we can calculate uh, by LCL by AR graph and it will be multiplied by two factor first is F1 which varies from 1.1 to 1.25. It is used to incorporate variations in feed characteristics such as temperature, pH, particle size and solid concentration. And similarly, second factor we have is F2 which moves from 1.1 to 1.5 and it takes care of the turbulence at the feed inlet. So, here you see we have, uh, uh, so here you have, you see we have uh, calculated, we have derived the expression for cross sectional area and through which we can uh, directly calculate the diameter of the tank. So, this se session I have to stop over here, we will consider the height of uh, sedimenter in next section. So, that is all for now, thank you.